We are glad to see you back. Those others did their best, but they don't know our ways. Nothing anywhere can compare with our Fat Controller's engines. It had been four days since the engines went to England. They all had a marvelous time while there too. Percy and Toby kept going on and on about the people they met, while Duck was overwhelmed with the many questions he was asked. All the same, they were happy to be home. However, the wee engines in particular weren't so happy. Hey! Watch where you're going, you. You want me to be late or something? I said I was sorry. But James just didn't listen. <sighs> What's got James so rallied up? Him, Gordon, and Henry must not have forgotten about what he did the day before we left. And Duck, however, was right. Ever since Thomas's accident, the engines had to wait until he was repaired so they could go to England. Though, the other engines decided to forgive Thomas, the bigger engines didn't, proclaiming he almost made them late. Even when they returned home, the mood didn't change. Silly little nuisance, making us late on the most important day we've had. I'm surprised Sir Topham Hatt hasn't sent him home yet. Probably because of his popularity in the books. Hmm. <laughs> Glory hog. Somewhere near the junction. It's gonna make me late for passenger service. All the three engines grumbled dreadfully, and soon it got worse. Well, look who's coming on. Thomas tried to ignore the big engines. Looks like someone's giving us the silent treatment. Well, great. I wouldn't want to listen to that blue pain any time soon. Especially not after making us wait for him to go to England of all places. Disgraceful if you ask me. Indeed. At last, Thomas spoke up in defense. I told you three, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was going to happen. The others let it go. Why not you? Rubbish! You, little Thomas, don't know an important moment when you see one. Perhaps if you were in our stead, you'd see your error. The only error I see is an error of misjudgment. The big engines looked crossly at Thomas. Then perhaps we shouldn't listen to a bothersome little tank engine like you. Thomas was surprised. He wasn't expecting to hear that. But I- Very well put, James. Why should we take some advice from some silly little blue tank engine like Thomas? But Gordon, I- Sir Topham Hatt relies on all his engines to work without any dilemmas. He should have sent you away for such carelessness a long time ago if you were to cause more problems for the whole railway. We would have ran this railway well without you. Quite right. Well said. Thomas said nothing. He just stared sadly at the buffers. The other engines felt sorry for Thomas. They knew he didn't mean any delays. The next day, 
Thomas was waiting at Natford to pick up his passengers. All the same, he was still thinking of last night's events. Hello, Edward. Good morning, Thomas. How are... Uh... I'm guessing you're also mad at me for what I've done before we left for England. Hey! <gasps> Edward was survived. Heavens no! I know you didn't mean to cause that accident. Oh, that's good. Can't say the same for the other engines, though. Edward looked puzzled at his friend. The old engine could sense something was wrong. But what? Before he could ask Thomas, the guard's whistle sounded. Well, catch you later, Edward. And Thomas puffed away, leaving a puzzled Edward behind. I wonder what all that was about, he thought. He found out the next day. Duck was away getting an overhaul. And Edward volunteered to do his shunting work while he was away. Edward didn't mind, of course, but he couldn't stop thinking about what Thomas meant until... Oh, it's you again. I keep telling you, I'm sorry. You and the others just won't listen. Don't put the blame on us! You know you were the one who had that accident. Maybe if you weren't so puffed up in the smoke box, we wouldn't have been a minute late. Edward watched and listened carefully. All I'm saying is, I didn't mean to make us a minute late, so can we just forget about that and move on? But Henry didn't want to move on. All he did was shoot fiercely at Thomas and hopped off in such a mood. Little blue nuisance. Gordon was right about you. Edward was shocked. It was all so clear now. Something must be done, he thought to himself. Once the work in the yard was all said and done, Edward raced back to the sheds at once. He arrived just in time, too, as he noticed the big engines having it out with Thomas, and Thomas looked very glum and very small. At last, Edward stepped in. Gordon, James, Henry, leave poor Thomas alone. The worst has happened, and this grudge has gone for far enough. The big engines stared for a second. Edward thought he had gotten through to them, but he didn't. So you're standing up for this little pest? Honestly, Edward, I'm starting to question our friendship. I think we all are. Listen here, Edward. That tank engine nearly made us late. We would have been to England on time if he wasn't so selfish. And now you're being selfish. You stay out of this! You might have been a thorn on the railway from the start, but this draws the line. And if you think you can pin the blame on us again, little Thomas, then you've got another thing coming. Why you gonna throw yourself off the tracks again while you're at it? That's enough! All the engines stopped. They were all surprised. Edward was red in the face and stared furiously at the big engines. Just wait and see. One day you'll get your comeuppance, and when you do, perhaps you'll finally learn some sense in future events. The big engines stood still, with surprised faces. Only Gordon spoke. Hmm. I'd like to see that happen. Now come along, you two. It's best we get some sleep. Both Henry and James agreed, and they fell unhappily to sleep. Edward looked at Thomas and felt sympathy for him. Don't let the big engines get to you, and I understand that you didn't mean for that delay four days back. Thank you, Edward. At least you and the others care. Indeed. Edward paused for a moment, 
And then he spoke. Tell you what, why don't you shunt in the Navford Yards for me while I take care of your passengers on the Farquhar branch? Just for today. And if the big engines disturb you, pay no attention. How does that sound? Oh, yes. Thank you, Edward. And with that, Thomas fell happily asleep. Edward just grinned and followed suit. But what neither engine knew, that someone had been watching and seen the whole thing, the figure turned on his heel and walked off. The next day, with authorization from Sir Tom Hatt, the two engines began their job swap. Edward took charge of Thomas' passenger vans. The passengers loved Edward's tender care with Annie and Clarabel, and even Annie and Clarabel enjoyed the relaxing vibes he did with them. Such a lovely engine he is. Gentle and strong. Even old manner too. <sighs> if only Tom's was like this. Meanwhile, at Knapford, Thomas began to enjoy Edward's shunting work. It was fun to go back and play with the trucks and organise trains like the old days. And whatever the big engines would arrive to pick up their trains, the little blue engine would do nothing but ignore them. Well, this is a certain surprise. Your fireman and I never saw you this hyped before. Even Toby and Percy didn't mind this change, knowing about Thomas's issues with the bigger engines. However, despite the change of scenery, the big engines still didn't let the thought of Thomas's mess up slip them. One day, however, that would all change. Thomas brought in the coaches to the platform as usual. As he pulled in, however, a loud groan could be heard from one of the coaches. Thomas was surprised. What was that? The fireman inspected the coaches one by one until he came across the problem. Looks like something's wrong with the leading wheels. Any more movement will surely cause an accident. Oh, that won't do a bit. Come on, after we get a drink, let's get a replacement leading coach. Thomas found it best to do so. Unfortunately, they reckoned without Gordon as he backed into the coaches in such a bad mood and bashed into the coaches. Everyone get in quickly, please. I don't have time to wait. And the passengers did so. Thomas raced into the station. He was surprised to see Gordon already coupled up to the train. Move aside, little Thomas. I don't need you spoiling my express run like the way you almost ruined our trip to England. But you don't understand. The lead coaches... I don't have time to fool around, especially with the likings of a little nuisance like you. Now, if you don't mind, I have an express to get to. And the big engine stormed off with the coaches, following behind, while also leaving an anxious Thomas. At first, the run started well. Gordon raced through the countryside in fine style. Express coming through! He'd almost forgotten about Thomas. The big engine thundered past Edward Station, just as Percy arrived to drop off the mail. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Just as they'd begun to pick up speed, there was trouble. 
because he didn't listen to Thomas about the lead coach. Both Gordon nor his crew had any clue about its faulty wheels. A loud groan made its presence felt, and suddenly Gordon could feel a heavy weight pulling him back. That's odd. The press is getting heavier. His crew soon realized the strain as well, and soon they too were concerned. Once we get to the nearest station, we'll sort out the problem. But they didn't make it. They were nearing Kirk Ronan when the strain behind Gordon's tender started to strengthen, until, at last, the coupling between Gordon and the leading coach finally snapped. Both driver and fireman was shocked to see the express coaches running far behind at the terrifying speed. Faster, Gordon, faster! There's a runaway behind us! Further up the line, James was waiting at a red signal. He was waiting for Gordon to pass so he could be on his way. Unfortunately, he wasn't informed about the Runaway Express until suddenly... LOOK OUT JAMES! <gasps> then everything happened at once. Luckily, no one was seriously injured. Only a few passengers had some bruises here and there, but the mess was awful. Bust my bluffers. Gordon was relieved he wasn't derailed. He looked severely at the mess. He was very cross. This, this is all Thomas's fault. He must have sabotaged the express as payback to- Get off with Thomas already! This is all your fault! You refuse to listen to Thomas! He must have tried to warn us about this! If you weren't so busy reminiscing about what he did, this wouldn't have happened! You see what your grudge has gotten us into? Gordon said nothing. He just stared silently, a shocked look on his face. A few minutes later, Duck arrived with a breakdown train to clear the mess and some buses arrived to take the passengers home. They railed the coaches when Sir Tobham Hatt arrived on board Edward. The accident wasn't your fault, Gordon. We should have expected the coaches while we had the chance. He paused impressively. But I'm still going to have to punish you, you as well, James. Both engines gasped in shock. <gasps> Your behavior towards Thomas has been appalling this past couple weeks. I'll have you know the day after we returned, I gave Thomas a stern word about getting puffed up in the smoke box, and he promised me that he'll take care in future events. But that does not give you permission to be rude to him whenever you're around him. You, James, and Henry have caused an inconsiderable amount of confusion and delay. As a punishment, Henry will stay in the sheds, James will shunt to the yards, and Gordon, how would you like to take Dad's slow goods while he has a day off? Gordon was shocked. Goods? Sir, you, you can't be serious. I, I'm an express engine. You can't do this. And yet, he just did. Precisely. Perhaps this shall teach you three a lesson in future events. Yes, sir. Right then, Edward. I need you to help Duck clean up this mess, and please take the unhurt coaches back to Napford. Yes, sir. For the next few days, Gordon took the slow goods. He hated this punishment dreadfully. He hated it even more when he heard that Sir Topham Hatt had rented another engine to pull the express. James and Henry, on the other hand, felt it much worse. 
when Henry sat sadly at the sheds. Hedwood or Percy took trains taking his passengers or goods, all shunted by drains, who grumbled dreadfully at the thought of shunting another goods train. back to his branch line. He was happy to be on his branch line again, and it was back to work with Annie and Clarabel, and even Toby, Percy, and the passengers were happy to see him again. When the big engine's punishment was over, both Gordon and James sunk sadly back to the sheds in disgrace. Everyone was silent until Edward broke the silence. I take it you three have learned your lesson from the past few days. James and Henry just remained silent, but it was Gordon who spoke. Indeed. Thomas, let me be the first to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't listen to you, and I'm sorry about how we were acting towards you. I'm sorry too. Me too. Thomas just stared for a second. He then gave a sm small smile. That's all right. I suppose I'm sorry too. I was the one who held us up because of my excitement. So, all's forgiven. All three engines smiled. Percy blew his whistle and Toby rang his bell in delight. Thomas couldn't help but join in the fun. And so, the other engines followed suit with Gordon, James, and Thomas's whistle being the loudest. And from that day on, the big engines had great respect for Thomas. Sometimes Gordon and Henry would stop by and let him know the news, while James would take him time to give a polite greeting whenever he sees him. Thomas the tank engine could agree, a new shift had begun between him and the bigger engines. And something tells me there's more in store for Gordon. But that, my friends, is another story. Morning, Gordon!